Kagura Fuji is announced first from Team Japan and he immediately hypes up the crowd. He's going to enjoy climbing in front of his home crowd. Absolutely. I mean, he's always so fun to watch. Always smiling, looks like he's having fun. So that'll be great. And then out next, Hannes van Dyssen. He was part of Team Belgium who were watching that semi-final and they, were, they couldn't stand still. They were like running around, jumping up and down. Like they were so nervous about him getting through. Yeah, I mean, it's Hannes's, that was Hannes's first semi-final. So to make the final as well is just so insane. He must be super Mejdi, excited. Mejdi Schout introduced. He'll be looking uh, to add another gold to his collection of one gold. And then Serato and Ruku enters the stage. 16. John Won Chon from South Korea, an absolute legend. Good to see him. And then Paul Jemt, only 19. I remember watching him compete in youth competitions, uh, in youth world championships, and now he's in the senior circuit and looks completely at home already. Yeah, he hasn't been competing on the World Cup circuit for so long, I don't think. It's maybe only his fifth or sixth Boulder World Cup, but he's made a couple finals already, so. It'll be exciting to see if he can make it onto the podium. Yeah, he's Fourth place being him to see who can work out the methods a little earlier on and have maybe more time to work through the sequence on that one. Well, that's our top six. Kokoro Fuji will come out first uh, because he qualified last, whereas Paul Jemt will come out last because he qualified first, if that makes sense to you. So it's done in the opposite order. So the athletes will be competing over those four boulders. And if you're new to comp climbing, well, I'm going to go through the rules in a minute. And bear with me if you are an old hand at this. Compared to, to when they start on a slab and have to be maybe a little more relaxed. Well, let's have a look at it. Starts off on those green tabs, one limb on each. You've got to run and jump to start with. There is a jib on the right-hand side, just underneath the starting holds. There's a big press and then a jump into a pocket. Potential heel hook from that pocket on the pink volume before going up towards those pinches or slopers, however you want to call them, but dual techs on both sides and then finishing with the top, which you have to match with both hands in control. Now, in the middle of that climb, there's a zone hold. That's the first scoring opportunity. And the aim of the game here is to climb the boulder in as few attempts as possible. If you can do it first go, that's called a flash. That's the best result possible. And we'll jump them higher up the leaderboard. All right, let's get underway, shall we? Kokoro Fuji starting, looking to see if he can maybe do it statically there, but and that will count as an attempt because he left the ground, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's looking like you'll need to get that left hand around the volume to compress so that you can start, but it's quite high off the ground, so they'll have to get a lot of momentum. Uh, there we go, jump, jump nice and high. Yeah, better from him there. Perhaps a, a little bit... Uh, well, maybe rushed at the beginning on that climb. You might regret that later on, you never know, but into a toe hook. And that hold, although it looks massive, not quite as good as it looks. Yeah, the zone is deceptively slopey, so not quite as in-cut as the athletes may want. They'll have to make sure they're not swinging too hard uh, when they get in. The final went, and because we didn't see many tops, and they were expecting apparently 12 tops on that last boulder, for example, but only got a few, so... Very, very difficult round. Now he's changing the... Oh, no, he's not. He comes into the toe now. Drops to the sloper. Trying to span the distance before dropping the toe. That would be an interesting method. He might be able to hold the zone that way, but releasing that swing is still going to be very hard. So that'll be interesting to see if he opts for that again or not. Yeah, and the zone hasn't been given, although he's touched it, you've got to use it. You've got to move from control position to control position. So just slapping at it like he's doing, you don't get the points for that. And he's only got 21 seconds left. This will be our last try from Kukoro. So, onto the toe, trusting the rubber. 11 seconds, he's just want to get the zone, and that's much better but he's not going to have enough time to complete the boulder, and he does come down. <laughs> he's in a very interesting headspace at the moment. It's like every all the other Japanese athletes seem a little bit worried about select. And now this man, well, he's going to be loving every second of this. Hannes Van Dyson enters the arena. He was 19th in Morioka for the uh, combined. 
Hey. He's won junior boulder competitions before, but never been in a final. And as you said, never even been in a semi-final before today. Yeah, I believe his, his best result before this was 31st, so he, he will be very happy to be in this final. There was an interesting moment when it was confirmed that he was in the final. It's like he had to switch modes, and his coach immediately took him out of the arena and was like, okay, you know, calm down, we're doing something different here. But for the whole team, it is a bit new for everyone involved in it. Definitely. I mean, before that, I think Simon Lorenzi had made the final in Innsbruck. Is, has this kind of situation where there's no pressure, and perhaps that's going to produce some special results. We shall see. So he is opting for this different method without the toe hook, just pole going into that zone hold. Yeah, when the athletes read the routes, they tend to do so in teams. So I wonder if Serato is going to use a similar method to Kukuro or, or what's going to happen, but we'll find out in a couple of minutes. That was a replay of Hannes coming down. Yeah, that zone hold looks very hard to hold with just the one hand. It really does. What an exciting border. Well, we know at least the move's possible. It took Kokoro seven attempts to get that. Let's see what Hannes can do. He's on attempt number five, and that was close. Jump ahead of him. Oh, I love that swing. Come on, Hannes. Oh. Did he have one hand over the other then? Yeah, right hand on top of his left there. It looks like there's probably just a small portion of that hold that's not too bad to grab, and they're trying to get as much of, of their hands in there as they can without uh, fumbling, fumbling their hands. So we'll see if he can, he can get that precision right for that move. Yeah, there's a lot going on in this move. Not only is he uh, doing it with two hands, he's bumping it in midair. This will be his last try here. Oh. And he comes down, oh, he's, he's oh. running back on. I mean, he'll know from the semi-final how important the zones are. Yeah, absolutely. If he can make that work, and he does. And he does make it work. He's wow. got a... Well, we'll wait for confirmation of that zone. I spoke too soon. That last go is great. Yeah, zone is nine from a bit like the semi-finals, the zones, I think, are going to be vital here. Now, this man, Mejdi Shal, I think, will enjoy this kind of a boulder. Yeah, I think Mejdi has a really good shot at this first bit. I think he'll probably try a similar method to Hannes. Yeah, kicking that leg, and that was really close on the first attempt. In that, that better portion of the hold. Let's see what Mejdi can do here. Well, he very gets nice. It. Yeah, very good. He's looking strong this year. A little bit inconsistent at times last year. It's something he's been working on and, and just looks like a slightly different climber, a bit more focused perhaps. He looked very focused in the semi-final, very intentional in his movements. So it'll be very cool to see what he can do tonight. He really grabbed, put his right hand straight on top of the right, left, right hand straight on top of the left hand there, grabbing the circle. Oh, the effort there required. Uh, so, Kokoro's seven. Honest is nine, yeah. And again he gets it. So he's got a foot on, pops up, gets the foot back on, and almost like a bicycle underneath that. Yeah, a lot of core tension required to get the foot back on the back on the pink hold, which is not a very good volume to stand on at this angle. It would be quite hard to get any pressure out of that. Yeah, I mean, obviously he's going to move his feet into the pocket, but something I noticed in the semi-finals was he's one of those climbers where every go he improves a little bit until he gets it, you know? There we go, now gets the foot in the pocket. 25 seconds to top this thing out. He's gonna to wanna to either cross or get his hands somehow on the other one, or Dynamic just jump. Dynamic finish here. Oh, and the top from yes. Mejdi. Mejdi gets it done. With lots of time remaining. <laughs> and I think 
He's a bit excited by that. He'll be very excited for that. That'll give him a lot of confidence going into the next folders. Definitely starting up on a, on a strong note here for Mishy. Wow, very oh. hard move to get the foot in the pocket. It looked like that shoulder held it just long enough. Super impressive work from Mejdi. And that last dynamic catch bringing it in really powerful. Lots of core required, but well done, Mejdi. Right, we wait for the next athlete out. It's going to be Serato and Raku, 16 years old. All of his coaches talk about how he could be the next thing. He won in Dallas for the youth. He's, he's up and coming, and this is his first competition. It's ridiculous. First cup, first final. Not many people can say that about the World Cup, so, so it'll be very interesting to see what he does here. Same method as Kukoro here with the Tomo. Wow. Oh. I mean, he flowed through that move. He'll know that Mejdi topped this as well, and he'll be looking to match that performance. But this is a bit awkward. He's trying to work the feet higher up the, the pink volume. Well, he flashed the zone, which is uh, pretty impressive on a boulder this hard. And he didn't make it look too, too bad to get to the zone, so I think he'll be able to get there again and have a good go at the top. Now, he's having a good look at this hold, because he wasn't in the best body position there to stick it, as you saw. Also, a bit of a foot slip as he went up towards it, but, I mean, there's nothing much to stand on, so... Ooh! That's a bit nasty. I hope he's, he's sm smiling. I didn't think he hit his knee on the way down. Hopefully that won't unsettle him too much. Sometimes that's just what you need to, a little reminder not to take yourself too seriously and have some fun out there. So. It's usually the moment I give up on a boulder. But he can't, of course. <laughs> he's got to carry on. Right, this high foot brings the arm down and loops it up. A little more time to rest and, and think about your next attempt. Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe it's a kind of a, a coaching tip. <laughs> right, so he's made this move look really good every time and again. Very good. He seems to be going quite low on that first volume and it's better in the middle of it, I think. It's wider down the bottom. Perhaps harder to hold, I don't know. Because you can see there's like a little indentation. Yeah, there's a little lip on the upper or middle to upper part of that hold. It's not great, but it might be just enough that they can kind of whip that their hips back over to the right a little bit. So Serato has another look at the clock, 45 seconds. He's already got the zone. Every time he does that, so wow. I'm a bit amazed. It's, it looks wonderful. It goes up with the left hand. That's interesting. Yeah, it seems like if you were able to get the left hand up pretty high on there, it might be easier to hold the position, but it's a little more powerful to get the height. I'll I, be curious to see if maybe Paul tries something like that. It's not often we see an athlete. versus keep trying the same method. Young Wan Chan is out and about. <laughs> the man will be climbing in his home country next week, but right now he's in Japan, a place where he comes regularly to train. So, kind of a second home for him here in Japan. Sticking to that toe hook method as well. Ooh, Leading with the left hand, uh, logged his start, so uh, dropped off that one, but he'll not make that mistake again. Right, he asked for a brush. That left side, there's no jib on there. On the pink, left side of the pink volume. It's quite bad. There is a little jib on that right side. They've been toe hooking on. Yeah, a volume like that, probably usually used to stand on. You can see all the rubber on it above his head. There we go. Left hand again. Looks like that swing is a little harder to hold. So. 
Right. Maybe one more go here left in him. Big run up to start with. But this next move, very difficult, but he will get the zone, and that's shot him up the leaderboard. That swing taking him out there. He'll be happy to have gotten the zone. Kind of puts him up there in line with, with everyone, except for Mejdi, of course, who's the top holder. But at least he'll have that zone, put some points on the board. Yeah, so the hand flip did it for him, and he needed that zone to stay in contention with the others. And he's right up there now in third place currently. There's one athlete left to go, which will be Paul Jem. Yeah, I, I feel like I've watched Paul grow up a little bit over the last couple of years because uh, he sort of came into my radar of the first Youth World Champs and then started to compete in senior events, built himself up. And I think he just needed a little bit of time to build up some confidence. And now, I mean, look, he's qualifying in first place for Boulder Championships. It's impressive. Wow, yeah, making that first move look really oh. easy and this move as well. See if he goes into that shoulder like Mejdi did or goes for the hand foot. Wow. Oh, how is that hand on oh, four wow, bumps wow. that was? Oh. oh, that was very impressive. That was a, a really, really good first go. He'll, he'll have some great goes if he can get back up there. Yeah, that was four movements with the right hand. And look, you can see his, oh, his other hand getting right in the way. <laughs> yeah, wow, his fingers stuck under his toes there. He does do stuff like that, though. It's kind of like... Yeah, and I think I mean, you said he maybe got a bit excited. And it is that feeling. It's like, oh, I can do that move easily. And then when you fall off it a few times, you're like, well, hang on a sec. What's going on here? There we go. And the experience there. Oh. Maybe burning out some energy there. He was so low on that hold the first time. And again, the height thing helping out a little bit so he could bump it through. But it's difficult to hold down on the bottom. That little, that small lip you talked about, that's not there. Definitely, that hold is quite turned. Really hard to hold at this angle. 19 seconds to go. The last, last second. Oh, this time he makes it work. Ten seconds, though. Keep an eye on the clock. He's not going to have enough time to do this, and he doesn't. Coming down. Mejdi leading the way with one top on the rest of the field. All the other competitors have its own there. We say goodbye to that boulder, and we move on. Let's check the scores while we do. Mejdi leading the way with that top. Four attempts to get there, followed by his teammate Paul, and then Serato in third place. John Wan, Kokoro, and Hannes Van Dyson at the end. That's our top six as we stand. Three boulders to go. And Chloe, the next slab. So we've gone from a physical one into a slab next, and uh, then more fully, because they are tricky. Well, here we go. Now, we featured this on social media, made by 360. They're dual techs, but not as we've seen them before. Yeah, these guys, they're dual techs, uh, kind of bubbles stick out of the wall there a little bit, but they have strips of texture kind of sporadically on the holds in different spots. They're not all the same. So uh, that zone hold, that, which is no longer actually the zone hold, but that big one has texture on the left side, I believe, dual text on the right. It's kind of hard to tell from the image, but when you're standing under them, you can more or less tell where the texture parts are on the yeah, a lot of people were sort of saying on social media that, you know, it's like it shouldn't be a guessing game. But you can see the texture. When I'm sitting in the commentary box and I can see the texture because the lights shine off the bit. But for sure it's more difficult, especially when you're padding with your feet and you can't see necessarily. Definitely, and you'll still have to be precise. But as you can see here, you can sort of see the outline of where the texture is. And from the ground, the athletes will be able to see that, um, depending on the orientation of the hold. But on this particular boulder, you can see where the texture patches are. Now, as you said, the zone has changed on this from that graphic. There's a black nubbin or jib right there. And there's various reasons for that, but mainly because having a large volume-like hold as the zone creates problems because you can crimp the edge of it. Athletes can claim they're using it by just touching it. They could 
say, you know, I'm moving from position to position. So they've put this black hold in as an extra. Yeah, so this zone, I guess, is acting a little bit more just of a marker to kind of mark that middle of the boulder, the zone hold there. But I wonder if that'll kind of trick the athletes into trying to use it, as we just saw Kokoro did, to really, like, grip it pretty hard and, and try to use it to move over to the left, whereas really they might be better off just trusting the feed and, and moving without making too much use of that zone hold. Yeah, because originally the zone wasn't in, as we saw from the graphic, so it's not integral to this boulder. And I asked the judges this, I was like, you know, do you need it to climb it? And they were like, well, you know, no, we put it in afterwards, but it's just to make judging easier to avoid lots of appeals. And we've seen this before, I remember in South Korea last year, there was a sort of a trick zone put in, where you didn't really need to use it. It does happen, but that's that dual tech surface. This one very much on the feet, about body position. Super different from our last boulder. They'll have to be a lot more relaxed and, and calm on this one. Kokoro using the zone well, though. It is seeming to help him, so that's good. And now he stretches. <laughs> it's like a hot thing, isn't it? You don't want to touch it. Yeah, it looks like you'll maybe want to reach over with that left hand and go and then stand up from there. Very precarious stand up. Oh, I'm holding my breath watching it. That's why, because you never know when someone's going to fall on a boulder like that. It can just happen at any second. Yeah, the, the foot just needs to pivot a tiny bit, and oftentimes you're off, especially with this one with the dual techs. On a lot of the hold, if your foot strikes the dual techs or that tech, uh, slippery part of the hold, you're not likely to stay on there. So. Yeah, he's trying Very to get the precarious. maximum amount of rubber down possible. Heels down, but well, you can see. And it's one of those climbs where getting to the very end and then falling is actually quite detrimental because it takes a while to get back there. Definitely, this whole walk across sequence is not something that they'll be able to do super quickly. They do have to, to be very precise there. So we'll see how many attempts the athletes are able to get on this one. Oh. That's better from him, though, looking more confident, but the bubble. <laughs> now, all in that left foot there. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> that's the kind of audience we have here, and it's so good to see. Little kids are in the audience and uh, being introduced to our sport, which can only be a good thing. Out he goes again to that zone hold. Making it work for him. Bringing the left foot up. Gently does it. Very nice work from Kukoro standing up on that left foot. You want to swap here? Oh. <laughs> Slapped towards the final hold as a sort of annoyance moment for him. But flashed it to the zone. That was a great, great progress from Kukoro. For, I'm sure he'll wish he had another try up there. Oh, he was smiling even in the air then when he was coming down. As clearly as I can hear, or we can hear the brushes because there's mics behind the wall here. So uh, we occasionally hear slaps and, and sounds that you wouldn't normally get in a competition. But I, I'm not sure if it's a good or a bad thing, but it's certainly different. Yeah, that's awesome. Han is the only one to do the, the semis in the, or the slap in the cement semis be interesting to see if he gets this one done. Definitely oh. proved his lab skills earlier today. Yeah, that was amazing. It was the first, well, the only one to do it, as you said. And yeah, go back and watch that. So he's got history on this piece of wall. Oh, thumb on the zone. Oh, wraps himself around. And Good it's attempt from Honest there. Seems like there's a bit of a biting point on that. Like, it's almost like the moment where he did start trusting his foot was the second he fell. If you look, he wraps his arm around and then maybe took his concentration away from his foot for a second and that's what caused it. Yeah, these these volumes are pretty low profile, so the slightest bit of, uh, of kind of uncontrolled little foot twitch or, or pivot is sending them off, it looks like. I want to be very intentional about the way his feet are moving through this section. 
Looking pretty confident here, though. Tres definitely trusting that left foot. Right, watch that left foot. That's what it's all about. That looks better. Oh, but that foot match, he almost did in his own toe. Well, he managed to match me, which was where Kokoro struggled. Oh, how did he catch that? Right, one move to go, but it's not the top. Now wow. it is. Well, Hannes van Dyson is clearly the slab master. <laughs> that was awesome from Hannes. He really slowed it down at the very end there, kind of felt himself probably falling out from the wall and just went for that finish. I reckon he technically... All right, well, that is our uh, current leader if he was to get the zone hit. Mejdi has a long look. He'll want to remember where the textured surface of these holds are just in case. Yeah, Mejdi definitely a strong slab climber. Stands up walking his feet over can't really see them because they're so far underneath him now looks down for the left into the zone watch his feet here oh it's the crucial stand up here off the left foot it's interesting isn't it it's like new school holds but old school slab climbing you know this is like everything you you expect from a slab, delicate maneuvers and oh big jump. Wow. Meji going for a jump there. I wonder if he'll try it a little slower next time. I think he probably will. Looked very good getting into that position. Hannes we saw got the left foot up and kind of stood up from there. Mejdi opting to jump from, from You know, we were saying it's it's a, it is quite a slow slab, you've got to take your time on it. Right, so he gets stood up. He's trying to go faster, but can't go too quickly. And in a minute, that buzzer's going to go, and that might unsettle him a bit. There he goes. All about the confidence in the feet, this one. There you Stand go. up here. Nice. Okay, right, let's see if he gets that left foot up. Oh, he will. Yes, he does. First with a heel and then more rubber, and now he can stand. And now he'll do. Well, it looks like he's wanting to jump into it. Oh! Wow! Two out of two. Super strong work from Mejdi. He'll be very happy with that. It's like a, watching a different climber, honestly. Like from how he was last year, he, he was good last year, but he seems he's just different somehow this year. He looks like he's on a mission out there for sure. Oh, there we go. Serato walks in. It's like they were holding their breath for their man. Serata and Raku comes on, lays the, uh, the towel down, which is very needed on this boulder. Very hard to stand on. I think a lot of it is, is happening in the hands here, just kind of hanging on that first hold. And then they really have to transition off of the hands and onto the feet, balance through this section. Oh, didn't manage to save that. You can see the balance go. Slightly was up again, had a look at that left foot, just making sure he's standing in the right place. There it is. Rotates the left through. Careful not to stand in your own toes. You can see how little rubber's on it. That's risky with that left like that. It's very close. Yeah, he's opting for that, uh, that full foot on there rather than heel kind of down. It worked well. Let's see if he can get stood up on this left foot. Oh. That foot switch, this is where Kokoro lost it. Oh, he does. That was a very dynamic foot swap. I was worried that. And now he'll go. Oh! oh. Wow, that was very close. It was very close, and he was disappointed. Looked like he just lost it at the last second, standing up there, kind of fell away from the wall. Almost like maybe he went to grab that right hand and actually didn't get too much out of it. 
Yeah, I mean, it is blind as well. It's round the corner. But the clock is, is your enemy on this, and it's ticking away. So up to the starting hold. Stands up, face breast against the slab. Come on, Toronto. Into the Looking good, that left position is pretty good. Wow. He's so He's confident. Got that foot Oh, slaps and misses again. He's not going to have time, and I think he knows it. He's going to say goodbye. 20 seconds to go. A bit high on that last block hold. Yeah, it just looks like he kind of fell out of the wall there again. Not sure if, if he missed it that time or didn't quite. It's more than anything, isn't it? It's just, you know, you hope it's going to be that. You know, if, if Jung Won gets his fingers in that finish hold, he will definitely hold it. So let's see if he can get up there. All right, he's currently down at the bottom because of, uh, well, because we're only on the second boulder, but yeah. he will want to get a top hit. Showing us a little bit that that start position is quite hard. So he's kind of opting for a little bit more weight in the feed and wrapping that top hold, whereas the other guys seem to just kind of Get both hands straight on on that start hold and kind of sag low, really in the arms, as not so much in the feet. Yeah, as we see here, different hand position. So better from now as he pulls on, and it was a good way of demonstrating what we were talking about, how bad those first footholds are. Oh, standing up. Now he'll be able to climb in those feet a little more. Gentle, gentle with the feet. Kicks. They didn't use it properly. That would have counted in the old days, but they changed a couple of years ago, and it's, uh, it's different now. Yeah, he'll have to make some use of that zone. Let's see if he stands up through the left foot a little bit more this time. Still really eyeing down that zone. Let's see if he can reach it. Oh, laser focus. He gets a finger on it. Now he'll stand straight up, I think. If he can move the foot, and he does get the zone on that. Oh. Ooh. Looked like he was trying to maybe palm that bottom one. I think these holds are going to be quite hard to hold in that type of position. So we'll see if he tries that again, or maybe opts for, for moving the feet across. And he's got 30 seconds to do it, so this will be the last attempt. Up. Oh onto the starting holds, gets the left. You can see him moving a little bit quicker now. Breathing heavily as he tries to find the right point with his feet completely blind. Oh, look at his eyes. I want to really stand straight up on that left foot. Oh, but he tries to jump again. Yeah. It, it, not, I would be surprised if he made that work, that kind of that jump and a press. Yeah, that left went with anybody, or, or if that was more what he read on that boulder. Yeah, he was the only one to even try something like that. I think he just couldn't couldn't find the balancing point, couldn't get further left, and thought, well, if I can't if I can't span it, I've got to jump it. But so Paul is off, standing up. Oh, wow. Dodges the middle one, but he's going to have to really bump the right. I think he's going to go back, yeah. It's just for use of the zone, he kind of pulled on it a little to show that he was moving around. Um, and now he'll come back and, and try to make more progress on the boulder. Yeah, it would have been, uh, and that's, yeah, that's what he fell on. And that's good to show how bad they are. That you, you couldn't stand on them without a feet, without a handhold. No, that, that panel also, I think, cuts in a little bit there. So they're even worse than they might look on the video. Okay, that foot movement, once again, gets stood up with the left. Now he does what everyone's done. He uses the zone again. Most of them get into the zone pretty quickly. It seems to be this next sequence. Very confident in that left foot, stands up. 
get the left foot up again here. Yeah, he's reading this well now. Oh! Wow. Well, he's the only one to have done that like that. Just looks so confident. He obviously hit the right bit of friction in the right body position and yeah, didn't need to jump. Leaned all the way to the left, made the most use that he could of that that hand hold up there on the top top volume. That way he didn't have to aim to that that slot the same way as the others. Oh yeah, that was it. Fingers on the and onto the top matches. And that is Paul's successful top of that slap joins his teammate for climbing up and that moves him into third position at the moment. That's the zone and let's look at the score. So Mejdi leading the way, two tops, followed by Hannes on top in the zone. Paul, Serato, Kokoro and Yongwon down the bottom. That is our top six, that's our podium as it stands, two down. Big slopers that we see in competition. And then, of course, a lot of competition-style boulders, a lot of slab climbing. Um, it's a great place to see, and I think we'll have a lot of athletes coming through town to kind of train there early a little bit. And that'll be a lot of fun for everyone. Awesome. Well, we're looking forward to that. But this is the next climb. Fairly easy start according to the route setters, but to my mind, it looked horrible. Tiny little nubbins there. You get to the zone, and then you do this run and jump across the wall towards that hold. No real place to stop. A kick on that final green volume to stop the swing is the plan, but I watched route setters running across it in trainers earlier on, but taking some pretty spectacular falls, you have to fully commit to that jump. Yeah, definitely. The feet seem quite good throughout this whole jump sequence, but the timing on the hands looks very difficult. These holds are dual techs, and they kind of have that just chunk of texture on the top of them, and they're not super good or easy to aim for, so I think that'll be very interesting to see what people opt for. So here we go, he pulls on. Just a finger wrapped around that first hole, but into the first of them. You can use the arete there, it's not out. Yeah, this zone move not looks too bad. Okay, really it's all about this move. That first bit was just a setup for this spectacular run and jump. Midway up this wall, kicking the left foot. Oh, it, it's one of those coordination moves that usually we see on the ground, you know, like a couple of feet up, but he's halfway up the wall and it does change things. It is quite high up and I think the, the climbers will be a little bit hesitant maybe to really go all out on the first attempt, which is maybe a good idea, but also it's when you can give a really good first go, it's great in terms of learning the move and kind of deciding what you want to change. So we might see some pretty spectacular falls here. I'm very curious to see the hand sequence that the climbers decide to use in this top section. It does look really awkward to cross like Kokoro just did. So we'll see if they try that or maybe match one of these holds. We'll see, I think we'll, we'll see a lot of people trying this move up here. As you said, the start sequence isn't so bad. All right, he's swinging with the feet back and forth. Oh. I did look and maybe maybe go the other way a little bit. Um, but it, it's good, like in any round, to have some variety. We had a pretty powerful first boulder here, and it's cool to see, I think, some coordination being tested on this one. Absolutely right, here he goes again. That right leg swinging back and forth. All right, will he try to cross right, left, right again? He yeah. does, and he gets closer. The hands were there, the feet lagging behind a little bit. It's going to be really hard to get the timing right for both. Volume. So it's easy start, but a bit nasty with the fingers. Oh, do I say that? And he loses a foot, but managed to catch it. 16 seconds to go, last chance on this. Wow. Very close from Kokoro. Oh, he won't have time here. That was definitely his best try. All right, Hannes, well, we know he's a slab master. Is he a run and jump master as well? He did do the coordination move on the men's floor in the semi quite easily. So I know, we know he can jump and kind of do those paddle dinos. So I think 
he definitely has a shot up here. I'm excited to see what he does. Sitting in second currently, wraps that finger around the hold. Definitely an awkward start position, but maybe not too, too bad. The feet are quite big. Ooh, uses the toe to catch him. Different swing with the legs. Um, goes way back on this one. Unless you're, well, naturally incredibly good, which I know these guys are, but it's good to have that thought process of, right, I'm going to go right, left, right, or whatever it is. Definitely. I'm sure they've all read, they all read this move and kind of imagined their initial impression for the hands and feet, which, uh, which order they wanted to whether they wanted to match this first foot or cross the feet through. But it might, it might feel and look a little different once they're in that starting position from the zone. Let's see if he tries to match feet on this final volume again. He does. Definitely got through more of, more of that jump this time. He is getting, his body's closer to the wall uh, than Kokoro was uh, when he did his attempts. He kind of we watch again. He's pretty close to getting that. If you're just joining us, hello and welcome. My name is Matt Groom. I'm here with Chloe Koskoi, part of Team USA, in the commentary box. And we are in the men's final in Hachiochi, Japan, on Boulder 3. Good final so far. And about halfway through this field. Well, two athletes into this uh, third boulder. It's almost like he's trying to stop on that hold. Yeah, it looks like he's kind of using his right foot to really create a bit of a little bit to the left. So we'll see if he if he keeps doing that or maybe kind of launches into the to the right a little bit more. So you'll notice the way he swings his right leg kind of helps him stop on this first position. I think he's trying, he's trying a static something different approach. here. I mean, I, I get what he's thinking there, but I think it's going to be very difficult to stop because there isn't a blocker for the foot. And, and that side pull is, is such a side pull. Yeah, that looks quite hard. I think no matter what way they choose to do it, I think there's probably a few ways that you can make it work, but you've got to move pretty quick. What's Especially with the feet, I think they need to lead the way here. Look, wow. Oh, well, maybe. He's not going to have time. That wasn't a bad idea for Lannis. It's one of those strange boulders where everyone is going to get that zone hole. Usually, once I say something, it will happen, inevitably. <laughs> Medjdi, he is our current leader. You can see one gold, one silver, one bronze in boulder. And he wants another gold, and he's putting himself currently in a good position to do so. Uh, Medjdi definitely known for these coordination moves. I think reading this boulder, he was probably pretty excited, so I'm really curious to see what method he opts for here. Yeah, there are some climbs that... Ooh, Different I don't know, start so. position here. We saw the other climbers kind of wrap these... I told you, I did tell you, inevitably. <laughs> you did, you did. <laughs> I need to learn to be quiet sometimes, I really there do. There we go. It's funny he tried that because uh, I watched everyone practicing it. Everyone had a finger wrapped around it. Yeah. Oh, he's doing it again. I think he, he should be able to make that work. I think maybe getting a little in his head here, but should be able to do it. Oh, he Very interesting. I wonder if maybe the, those Grams are really awkward, or he's getting in his head a little bit here, but he should definitely be able to make this work. That looks, that's looking better. There we go. Not so bad there. Now with the toe hook, and I think that will give him... get to the zone here. There we go. It has cost him time, though. The time could be a factor on this. He breathes out, so... 
that arc motion with his foot there. Oof. Opting to skip that middle hold there and kind of do what Hannes did on his last attempt. It almost wasn't a concern for her, but... Uh, I mean, you are just wrapping one finger around this tiny little nub, I think. Definitely uncomfortable for some of the athletes, but makes it work here. Absolutely right, he's got a minute. Takes a big breath. Oh, that was really close. You'll want to give that another go. I think he'll probably try that same method again. He looked very close there. So here we go, 18 seconds. He's going to have to be so quick. Up he goes this time at five seconds. He's lit. It's going to be a buzzer beater if he can do it. Oh. oh! Wow! Very close from Mejdi. I wonder if he banged his nose there as well. He keeps touching his face like he's hurt it. Or his nose, or maybe he got some chalk in his eye. Uh, it's, yeah, maybe. Pressure on pressure on pressure, and you know it can start to tell in you. I mean, Hopefully you can find out. If he wins, you can find out. Put it like that. Definitely. Yeah, it'll open it up just a little bit, leave some room for people to, to get a top here. Right, Serato, let's see how he does it. He's choosing not to wrap and then... All right, Serato goes again. I mean, the athletes did spend a lot of time touching these first two holes. Obviously, it's the only ones they can touch, but some of them were looking more concerned. It may be a height thing as well. Yeah, it seems like kind of that, like those two start holds are so bad, they kind of force you to want to sit low if you're crimping them. It makes it really hard to move upwards. But if you do undercling them, I think it's a little more natural to reach up. So he's really wanting to sit low on those feet and popping up for that first That's male semi boulder which was a big coordination move would love to see him try this last move wow. yes okay. now he brings a bit harder but makes that work all right so he should get to the zone which he does so now he gets an opportunity on this jump but this could be one and only So he's opting to kick and grab the middle one. Yeah, he landed his right hand on that first one and then attempted to bump again right hand to the second one, which I imagine could work. But I think, as you were saying, you saw some of the root setters trying to stop just on that second one earlier, and it seemed quite hard. Well, there we go. It was a zone, but it was a fight for Serato. Stands, checking these moves. Opting to a similar method as Serato with the right hand. Zhang Wan would love to find a top here. See if he can figure out this first move first. It's interesting that our first few athletes didn't seem to have too much trouble with it, and kind of as we progress through this round, people are struggling a little bit with this first move. Makes it work though. Then turns it into an undercling and he's gonna stand up, get the toe hook in, and he should be from here okay to the zone. Right, okay. Gives himself more time to figure out the sequence. Wow. Totally missing that. Tries a completely different foot method from what we've seen so far but also trying to skip one. Hanging off that right hand once more, asking for a brush on it. Yeah, it looks quite painful to do it that way. To choose to crimp those start holds, they're very small. 
Now he's now rocking. Now he's trying that underclink. Yeah, the mono underclink method. It just opens well the here. body up a bit and it looks less shouldery. Yeah, it allows you to reach up quite a bit more. Let's see what he tries this time. Oh. Wow. The hand's definitely getting there. The foot, though, is still quite far away. So much going on on this move. Yeah, that big jump over the uh, second turquoise volume. Uh, and he's done. Uh, All right, Paul Jempt, what can you do? Let's see a replay of this. Yeah, I mean, although he had a hand on it, he was always going down, I think. Surprised to see him skip that middle handhold as well. All right, Paul's currently in third. that underclink method straight away. Looking a little scrunchy. Makes it work though. Yeah, straight away through. So as our first athletes did, flashing it to there and now giving himself lots of time to have a look at this. Oh, you can almost span it. Oh, into the bolt hole. Oh. Not the ball holder, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they had measured that out just to make sure he couldn't do that. <laughs> Missing it. If he could get both feet on, I think we would see him progress rightwards through this move a little more. Right, here he goes. Come on, Paul. There we go. Oof. Gets that left foot on this time, able to move rightwards a little more. I wonder if that's if he'll try that same method again. Okay, let's have a look at this. So watch the feet. Left and right at the same time. Just moving over. All right, he's got the zone. He's got a minute to go now. So he was looking to skip that that middle yellow hold of the three at the end there as well. So. People trying that. Yeah, Paul has two fourth place finishes, nothing higher than that. So if he stays in this, it will be a PB. Missing that left again. Yeah, I'm sure he would love to put some work on that fourth place and get himself a podium spot here. 30 seconds. Probably one last try on this. Oh, and that's a nasty fall down. He has his 15 seconds left. He might go again. He does. He got to be super quick, though. It would be pretty spectacular to see something here. Right, one swing. Medici did the same, remember? Oh, wow. It was close. Did you get to the zone on that one, but otherwise, it seems we've stayed pretty similar. Yeah, I think he was in third coming into that boulder, so it's bumped him down a bit. Ball comes up. Well, another style of boulder. It'll be very cool. And also steeper than than it looks maybe on camera. Absolutely. Yeah, quite steep, you can see it there. Well, the idea the root setters have is that they face towards the audience. They get stood up on those holds and then they jump while still facing the audience into those two slopers. That's the idea. Then into the zone, which looks like a jug, and it is a jug, but it's not like an in-cut jug. And, and then the top pull not great either. No, it's not. It looks way better on the uh, the graphic than it is in real life. Yeah. Very excited to see all the athletes work through this one. See who tries to face out, face in. Kokoro gets up, trying to figure this out. I don't think he's decided quite what he's going to do yet. Yeah, that could be really hard going into a boulder like this where you see a lot of potential options. Just making that decision and deciding to really commit to a method could be quite hard. 
But he's going to start facing in, yep. pressing up. He might turn around when, once he stood up. Yeah, it looks quite hard to get out of this position. Because the thing is, and you pointed this out, it's all very well to get your hand on it, but you've still got to pull up on it, and there's nothing yeah. for the feet. I can imagine, though, that facing in, they might be able to get both hands on the two black ones, but it'll be quite hard to get up, just because the angle of the wall will kind of push them away. But we'll see how this works here. Well, we said they'd try to break the beater, and he's, he is attempting it here. And he's gonna he's gonna go for the jump, I think. Oh no, right, okay. <laughs> MC hype in the crowd there. Oh he is basing out. Okay, here we go. So this is way number two. A left out gets the right in and he's eyeing up this jump now. Oh okay. Uh Trying to jump all the way to the zone with the left hand and kind of palm the lower volume with the right hand. It looks like the position might work to hold, but it would be quite hard to get all the way over there. I did see a few of them kind of look like they were miming that out during observation, so I wonder if we'll see a few athletes try that or if it'll just be too far. Face is in again. Stretching out with the right. Brings the left foot up and he wants to press, but look at that shoulder angle. And there's nothing for the left foot there, he's just standing on the volume. Wow. He's gonna go for a similar kind of thing, 24 seconds, whatever he does, he's gonna have to go for it on this go. Pressing, pressing, 12 seconds. It's really only been enough time for a zone. No. Uh, no idea. <laughs> yeah. Hands on hips. His comp is done. Sitting in fourth at the moment with that. No zone. Have a look at other people's beta or the other boulders. Let's see what Hannes can do. Remember his first final, first semi-final earlier on. Sitting in a great position here, the rankings, second place. Yeah, he's really set himself up for a possible podium. Decides to try facing in first. If he manages to place fourth or higher, it will be the best ever male performance by a Belgian athlete in a World Cup in any discipline. Wow. Very young as well, only 18 years old. So facing out this time. I have a feeling when they discuss this boulder, they all said, look, you know, we face in, we face out, because it's interesting how they've all tried it the obvious way and then immediately flipped back to the other way, or the two so far anyway. I wouldn't be surprised if they kind of assumed you were meant to face out, but so often you're able to maybe find something facing in which works, and it's definitely a little more natural to face in, but it's definitely for the face out here. Yeah, kind of aims for that. I hope someone's able to give that a proper try. It's rare that we get sort of an angle like that as well. You know, usually the wall isn't uh, that severe, a wall almost built into it. Yeah, and it's rare when we get a corner also, I think, to have another panel which is so steep. So that's really making for some interesting climbing. So he does jump, but Something he jumps like facing that. in. Yeah, but facing out. Let's see if he tries that on his last go here. Do you know? You know have you got any idea? He is facing in again. 17 seconds. Seemed a little frustrated there. Not quite feeling close on anything he's tried so far. He's looking to jump to the zone. He's only got five seconds. He's not going to make this. Goes for the press again. Yeah, so that is the intended thing, but the other direction. For those who are maybe unsure of what we're trying to describe there. Do that, but face the crowd when you do that. Yeah. Let's see. 
least guaranteed a top two here. Only Paul can catch him if he doesn't manage this boulder. But if he does do this boulder, he'll win the competition. Well, there we go. So this could be a gold. Yeah, then it is confirmed on screen. Top in unlimited attempts. He just needs to get it. And he is eyeing the jump and he gets yeah. it. And I wonder if, look, I'm looking at the sofa. Both of them lean forward to check it out. So you are meant to do that and then kind of jump upwards so that you're in the press that you can move out of. It's so physical though, this. He's going to be hanging in the air with his feet if he manages it and he jumps for the zone. Well, he's the first person to think about spanning it. He is facing it again. But this is the thing, you start to question yourself. You're like, well, you know, is it me? Am I just doing it wrong? Do I need to stick with this? And, and he is better on it. Gonna go for some kind of a jump, maybe sets himself up for the zone again. Jumps for the sloper. Yeah, looking for that kind of zone and, and palm press method, which is looking too far. Yeah. And just kind of jumping out into the air. All right, so what is he gonna do? A minute and a half. Still in the top spot. Remember, if he tops this boulder, he will win. If not, he's going to leave it down to the rest of them. Presses out again. Misses the left again. Now he gets it in. Right, he's in the corner. Oh, but that foot pop. Faces in, blowing the chalk off the hole. Right foot on. So awkward. Now get stood up. Left palm. Ten seconds. Is this going to jump for the zone? <laughs> he is. <laughs> <laughs> a little clap there. Hands on his hips as he looks up. Well, he's in first position at the moment. However, we've got three more to go. Now we'll have to wait and see, though. Only Paul Jen catch him. <laughs> right, Serata. Uh, well, I'm curious as to whether or not Paul being a taller athlete will like that sequence better. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking because, you know, it's going to be easier but serato has got a long way to go up to that press. Yeah. So flexible there, straight into that position. Very flexible, skilled in, in all in the different movements, so we'll see what he can do here. Not like that press. Yeah, so if you imagine a bit more height on that, that's going to be less of a stretch. Serato looking to upgrade from that fifth place where he's currently in. Trent is facing out right away. Seems set on that right now. So smooth with that right leg. He's looking Seems at the jump. Like he's going for it. Oh. It almost looks impossible for his span. That <laughs> I've never seen anything like this, and I doubt they have either. You know, it, it's you're gonna have some imagination here. He's gonna. He's gonna try that again. It's like not convinced. It seems. Has another long look at it. Serato's first World Cup. First final. Let's see if he can make something work here. Yeah, whatever happens, it's going to be a personal best for him. Come on, turn around. <laughs> Thing is, it, yeah, that good. Okay, come on, Serato. Last try from Serato here. 30 seconds. Come on, Serato. See if he can jump out of this position. He's going to go for the zone. Oh. <laughs> he wants to go again. Why not? Yeah. He's 
having fun out there. Yeah, why wouldn't you have it? World Cup stage, jumps. <laughs> I mean, look, Chloe, this is a bit frustrating, but at the end of the day, they're called Boulder Problems for, for a reason, you know, and, and it is figuring something out here. These next two athletes, let's see what John Watt can do here. So he'll know that no one's topped it. There you go, he needs a bronze in unlimited attempts. So if he tops it, he'll get that bronze. And he's sitting in last at the moment. Love a top here. Presses into the corner, starting facing in and gets the left on. Very blind when you press into the corner like that. You can see trying to look over his shoulder. It's a little taller than Serato looks. He can reach into the corner a little better in this position. He's lining up to jump. Right, he's palming the volume, pressing into it. Okay, so he goes for the press and the snatch. And He goes again, pressing into the orange volume. Facing a foot pop. Make sure his feet, because he doesn't want to pop like he did before. Brings that left foot back in order to be in the correct starting position. Oh, misses the first time. Second time, makes it work with the left toe. Presses his hands back. This will be his last go. Let's see if he tries something else. Oh, oh I mean, again, the right kind of idea, but it's so long and John one is done. So yeah, as you said, podium fixed. But can Paul Jemp beat his teammate to that gold medal? And Hannes, Hannes that means he's going to get a medal. <laughs> Super impressive climbing from him this week. <laughs> Wants to take the win here. We'll have to get it done quickly. <laughs> it would definitely do him good. So, a lot taller. He's palming on the left. Gets his hand on there. Oh, see, that's the, the advantage he's got on this. But look how horrible the shoulders are. He might, if he, he can bring his foot up. Jump into a press position, that's what he'll be looking for. He wants to bring his right foot up to match, I think, but it's super awkward. But yeah, he's got to cut loose his feet. Maybe he can make this. And you know what, he might. He might I mean, be able to try that initial jump. I think he will. what he wants to do is to try that same, to get in that same position facing out. So that's what he's going for here. Oh, he is turning. Look at this. So, so he's going to look to kind of jump up and press, face the crowd. Elbow pressing against the wall. Still in his first attempt here. All right, let's see if he jumps maybe straight up. Gets the foot up maybe? Yeah, that's wow. it. That's what I, I saw him thinking about doing is that right and then a press, but it's wow. a nasty, nasty yeah, move. Yeah, he's so stuck with his uh, right arm. He's going to need to oh. press up somehow. At some point, he's got to go for something. He's going to have to rest. Yeah, drops that hand down. Oh, we touched it, but got an incredible we, move. We spent five athletes getting to that point. That's the first time we've seen that, it. Yeah, so that is the intended method. 
And it looks hard. I mean, he can barely hold the span. It's Paul not establishing correctly on this pull there. Does need to get two hands or two points of contact on both sides. There you go. Now he's ready to go. Maybe a last attempt from Paul here. Oh yeah, I forgot about the clock, 30 seconds. Oh, he's gonna go for the zone jump. No, he's not, he's gonna go for the press. Here we go. Come on, Paul. Come on. No, oh, oh. that's super nasty, but he's okay. He felt close, it seems like. Made of rubber, but I think he thinks that's the way now. Yeah, if he gets the zone, he could at least solidify a second place here. Come on, Paul. Gonna try that again, it would great, be great to just see somebody do this move. Yes, no, oh, that, I think he knew that was it. Paul. Wow. Well, Mejdi will win his second World Cup. Two On gold medals. Second, and Paul in third. Well, that was a grind of a competition. Mejdi had to do the work early on, first and second. Now, Chloe, you're going to head to the front of the stage to go and interview him. Yeah, I will go over there. Thank you so much, Matt. Are you, it's been a pleasure. I'll either see you back or, or you might stay. Whatever. Thank you so much for uh, for being here. If I see you in a bit, that's great. If not, thank you very much. Awesome. I'll go interview Mejdi right now. Good luck, Chloe. See you soon. Mejdi 2023 is... Mejdi Sharuk from France! Dance show of Mejdi Sharuk Senses! Mejdi gets the gold medal. France, be proud of your man. <laughs> 